August 12th, 2019. Uh, first item I have on tonight's agenda is a resolution, I'm sorry, resolution 9319, uh, which is a resolution to appropriate $5,000 in the general fund for indigent burials. I'll save you all the excitement there, but this is a third or fourth or fifth year in a row. We've had to add money to in indigent burials. Uh, so we have uh, uh, budgeted $7,500 this year. Uh, we're up a little over a few dollars, over six thousand. So we're adding five thousand to the uh, to that particular fund. And in the event uh, we don't uh, use all that money, it all drops back into the carryover. So, uh, do you see any pressing on? You want two readings on this, or, or are we? <clears throat> did you have more indigent burials? So when I submitted this <laughs> to Miss Sandy, uh, we had two come in right after this empty or pot down to nothing okay. but uh, i disqualified one it didn't meet the criteria but you're almost uh, done we do have to follow so i have enough for one okay uh if if you you know if you could suspend that would be great it's just hard to say yeah, no we'll, we'll we'll ask for suspension i mean it's something we're required to do by law so i will say that we the highest we've ever had in a year is 11. we are sitting now at 10. don't break that record <laughs> all right how much is a a barrel premise? $750 is what we agree on to pay. So maybe next year we should consider 10000 for the budget? <laughs> <laughs> well, at some point they're betting it's going to go down, but... Uh, so, hey, yeah. The population's getting older. So. Yeah, well, that's true, too. So anyway, all right, well, we will ask for suspension tonight. Uh, Holly, would you second this for me, please? All right, so we will ask for suspension to uh, refill the coffers in the indigent burial fund and the general fund. So... Uh, very good, thank you. Uh, next item I have is resolution 9414. That's a resolution to appropriate $28,500 in the cemetery fund 270. Uh, this is coming through Public Works. Uh, Mr. Schoonover. Uh, yeah, Mr. Hintz is here to explain this piece, please. Good evening. Um, all right, the $18,000 in the legislation, uh, we had to go bid, rebid. Um, Four Story Cemetery this year and come in about just under eighteen thousand dollars higher. Um, I only had one bidder, so I was kind of forced to put. We were right down the line, forced to take that bid for now. Um, the other ten thousand five hundred uh, was split out for some services, uh, landscape services for the uh, new columbarium, uh, scatter garden. Uh, that the uh, Lancaster High School kids donated the initial 5000 and uh, we went ahead and finished it. So um, landscape services and some part-time uh, help this year uh, to help, help us get us through that. So um, if anybody didn't know, we dedicated it last Tuesday and it really turned out nice. Uh, if anybody know it's not the nicest thing to do is go out and look at the cemetery but if you get a chance to drive out by there and look at it uh, most everything was done in-house or other than a little bit of landscaping was formed out um, the addition or I am going to come back <clears throat> excuse me in October and rebid all three summit all, all of our cemeteries uh, so we're not guessing at what costs are going to be next year so I uh, probably see legislation mid-October. So hopefully things fall into place a little, little better. Questions? Yes, Mr. Woodard. Uh, you said, was it 18,000 over or how much is, it, is the contract for Forest Rose? The contract for Forest Rose is all uh, just under Caught me off guard with that one, Jerry. Um, I believe it's close to eighty thousand. That's pretty, pretty good increase. Mm -hmm. Further it questions? Was. 
I can't imagine it's a fun one to mow. I mean, no, <laughs> it's all up, up and downhill. Uh, further questions? Uh, what's your timing on this, Corey? Uh, three. Yep. Three readings. And your second, please. Uh, on this one is Miss Tina. All right. We will go three readings on 9419. Thank you, Mr. Hintz. Next item I have is 9819. All the other ones Mr. Wu will deal with here in a bit, which is a resolution to appropriate $75,000 in the LDOT Fund 208 and transfer to Fund 314 for an improvement project and issue a then and now certificate. I believe this is uh, coming again through Public Works, <coughs> Mr. Schoonover. Yep, this is part of our ongoing ED Road project. Um, Mr. Nolan's going to come up and touch on this and then be back up a little later for all the rest of his. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is um, uh, the next phase of our ED Road project and some funding that's being allocated towards uh, the acquisition phase of this and our local match monies. Um, we are trying to uh, get this rolling and get uh, our uh, uh, appraisers and negotiators and things kind of get, get things started. So this is part of our local piece of it. Uh, so. That's where we're at. Questions? No, well, we're going to ask for suspension on this piece tonight so we can move forward on that. Okay. Well, we were going to suspend on 9819. Who's your second, please? Uh, that'd be Miss Tiener as well. All right. Okay, so we will suspend on, ask for suspension on 9819. Thank you, Mitch. Next item I have is 10119. That was a, the walk in piece which is a resolution to amend permanent resolution 4819 by increasing the not exceeded amount to $270,000. Come from water, water pollution, Mr. Woodyard. Well, okay, it's good. Here's Denise. Denise, I will defer to Denise. <laughs> good evening, and first of all, I wanna thank Clerk Sandy for putting this together faster than I did today and getting it submitted. Um, we opened bids for the Montank Drive culvert, which we have a state capital improvement grant for. Um, and the bids came in just slightly under $270,000. Um, the original legislation that I submitted authorized the contract up to $250,000. So we need to adjust that amount so I can enter into contracts. Um, so. Um, I wanted to get it to you tonight so we could have two readings per my committee request. Um, so that's the story. Questions for Denise on this? Mr. Woodard, your second. Mr. Hall, and we will go two readings. Okay. Thank you, Denise. All right. Thank you, Denise. We'll go two readings on 101.19. Uh, next item for finance is uh, any departmental updates. Do we have any departmental updates this evening? Tom, did you miss 97.19? Nope. That's Mr. Ool will address that. Okay. Any departmental updates this evening? Yes, Trish. Auditor just, Neville. Just the uh, quick, I received um, in the mail today from the county auditor's office um, legislation that needs to come before council that it's approving the uh, 2020 real estate tax rates for 2000, uh, 2020 collections on 2019 valuations. Um, it can go through, when I submit it next meeting, it can go through full three readings, just has to be to the county auditor by October 1st. And I'll get that to Teresa Sandy and copy you, Tom, um, tomorrow. I got it in the mail today. Okay. Questions on that? Been a couple articles in the paper about all that, but our process has nothing to do with the valuation. It's piece. just, uh, it's just our annual budget. piece to be able to, uh, get the resolution from council that we will, you know, we accept them. <coughs> All right, uh, any other departmental updates? Seeing none, I'll defer now to uh, President Adul for tonight's meeting prep. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Stoughton. We have several resolutions and ordinances to work our way through. Uh, in this portion of the meeting, again, with temporary resolution 9519, authorizing the mayor to submit applications to the state capital improvement the local transportation program for E Road Safety Improvement Project coming through Public Works, Mr. Scudo. Um, yes, there are quite a few pieces here, so I'm going to have Mr. Nolan come up if we can, if we're okay to just hit all his at once. Is that okay with you? Sure. 
<clears throat> awesome. Uh, there you go. So this is our annual uh, submission of uh, our OPWC applications to the Ohio Public Works Commission. And um, this project uh, is one that has kind of expanded in scope uh, in, in several different ways. Um, and some of our construction costs have increased. And we feel like this, this project would be a good submission uh, for that project to submit for the local match. Um, we're currently, uh, our construction estimates that are coming forward right now with the Edie Road project, uh, our original estimates were around 1.3. We're somewhere in the 1.6 range. So we're increasing about $300,000. So we're hoping to use that OPWC grant to offset those those higher costs so um, that's what we're intending on submitting for so it would be something similar to uh, like our Commerce Street um, Quarry Road project where we would go for like a 74 26 split on that 300,000 the other remaining money is actually coming through the highway safety program so um, that's how we're trying to mitigate some of those costs thank you mr. Nolan are there questions for the engineer tonight if not, Mr. Schoonover, who's your second? Uh, that one be Mrs. Bobbitt. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. And what's your question on number of readings? Uh, we can do three readings on that one. Three readings then on temporary resolution 9519. We can move on to 9619, which I also believe uh, is yours. Resolution consent to participate in the bridge inspection program and sign an agreement, uh, Mr. Schoonover. Mr. Noland. Uh, again, this was, um, some of you may uh, remember this from a couple years ago. This is a task order that is uh, pushed through by Central District Office in, at ODOT. Um, we uh, basically rely on their engineers to do our bridge inspections for the 13 city bridges that we have. And uh, this has uh, been very advantageous for us. Uh, just uh, the South Columbus Street Bridge that we're actually working on now, the task order, they came down, did an evaluation on that crash that happened on that bridge, and um, uh, it was all paid for within that, uh, this PID number here. And so uh, this is just a re-upping of that task order, and there's no money exchange. This is something that's through federal highways that they do for munici municipalities that are less than 50,000 in population. Questions for Mr. Nolan this evening on 9619. Seeing none, Mr. Schoonover, who's your second? Uh, Ms. Teener. And we can do three readings. Three readings on 9619 then. If there's no objection, we'll pass over 97 at this point and go down to 9919 since Mr. Nolan is still there. Resolution to amend the official thoroughfare plan for the city of Lancaster coming through public works, Mr. Schoonover. Mr. Nolan. Uh, yeah, this is something that has come about, and, I, and this is uh, in conjunction with the uh, temporary ordinance 11, or I'm not, I'm just, let me get the right number here. Temporary ordinance 1319, uh, where we've been dealing with a lot of the, uh, the, the small cell technology and the right of way ordinance. Uh, we noticed that our thoroughfares uh, also within our thoroughfare plan and the right-of-way widths that uh, we've been discussing as part of this whole process. Uh, I've met with all of our department heads, all of our utility uh, folks internally, and we feel like it is um, something that we need to increase the size of our right-of-ways, specifically on our local and collector streets, and that piece is what is amending that in this section here, is amending those sections in the thoroughfare plan for increased right-of-way widths for the amount of utilities that we're dealing with in this section. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Questions for the engineer tonight on 9919. Mr. Schoenover, your second? Uh, Mrs. Bobbitt. Mrs. Bobbitt, how many readings? Three. Three readings on temporary resolution 99-19. Temporary resolution 100 19, a resolution to authorize the certain safety director to enter into a real estate agreement with ODOT for the Road Improvement Project. Coming through Public Works, Mr. Spooner. Mr. Noland. Okay, uh, this one is in conjunction with um, uh, the one we just dealt with, uh, with the uh, transfer of money from the 208 to the 314. <clears throat> uh, this is uh, the real estate agreement that we would be signing with ODOT um, uh, for this. Uh, uh, acquisition phase of the project. 
Um, <clears throat> and uh, it basically puts ODOT and us in contract with one another with uh, the acquisition start of this and our kickoff meeting that would start this next phase of the process. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Questions for the engineer? No, Mr. Schoonover, what's your pleasure here? Uh, Ms. Tina will be my second, and then we're going to ask for suspension on this piece. So suspension tonight on 100-19 with Ms. Tina as the second. Does that wrap it up for you there, Mr. I'm um, good. All right. Thank you so much. Let's pop back up to temporary resolution 97-19, then a resolution authorizing the mayor to submit application to participate in the state capital improvement program uh, and reconstruction project coming through water, water pollution control. Mr. Woodchuck. Mr. Uh, President, this is not a finance committee issue, so we'll discuss this in regular council meeting. I will go for three readings. I'll ask Mr. McDaniel to be my second. So three readings on a temporary resolution 719, and uh, Daniel will be the second. We will move on to temporary ordinance 13-19, an ordinance to repeal and replace links codified ordinance part nine of street utilities and public service code. Um, coming through law, Mr. Roth. Uh, yes, uh, this will be one also. We'll have the first reading tonight, but uh, it will go three readings. Uh, it's something that council has been aware of for some time, involving right-of-ways and the number of cities that have been involved in uh, putting this together through an outside law firm. Uh, this will be discussed in greater detail at the law committee meeting on Wednesday, so if anybody wants to participate in that, at least you got a copy to look at it in advance at this point. If you have any questions, you can do it at that time or at the next council meeting. Thank you, Mr. Groff. And just to clarify, this is the right-of-way ordinance that we've been working on for quite uh, a number of uh, months now. Yes. Uh, so, very good. So this will be first reading tonight. And who's your second? Uh, Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall will second uh, temporary ordinance 13-19, which will go for three readings. <coughs> very good. I think that addresses the... 101-19. We did that one. That was the walk-in legislation okay. that we addressed. With that, I will toss it back to the chairman. Thank you, Mr. President. So uh, are there any other items for finance? Seeing none, I believe uh, Mrs. Danauer will put us into executive session, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion for Finance Committee to convene into executive session to consider the purchase of property for public purposes as premature disclosure of such information would give an unfair competitive or bargaining advantage to the sellers to the personal private interest as adverse to the general public interest pursuant to Ohio Revised Code, Section 121.22G2. The executive session should include the following individuals. Finance Chairman, members of the finance committee council president council members assistant law director mayor auditor service safety director treasurer and city engineer mitch nolan second so we have a motion and a second to go into executive session um i need your verbal vote mrs Danauer. yes mr mcdaniel yes and i also vote yes we are in executive session There is no place like Lancaster, Ohio and Fairfield County, and like you, I am proud to call them home. As a longtime resident of Lancaster and graduate of Lancaster High School, this community is important to me, and I want to provide superior customer service, professionalism, integrity, and honesty at the Connor Insurance Agency. I am committed to supporting local programs and projects through my volunteer work and board membership with several organizations. It has been a great honor to work with all the first responders throughout Lancaster, Fairfield County, and the state of Ohio to put on Kids and Cops Day, to be a part of Shop with a Cop alongside the Lancaster Police Department and JFS, and to help Lancaster Public Education Foundation raise funds to support our local public schools and teachers. These men and women work hard to protect and support our community, and I would like to take this moment to say thank you for all they do. My goal as a business owner and insurance agent is to provide my clients with the most appropriate services and coverage for their needs at a competitive rate. As an independent agent, I have several carriers to choose from so I can customize your insurance coverage to fit your needs and desires. I strive to make sure there are no gaps in your coverage that could be harmful and just as important that you are not overinsured. I look forward to serving your insurance needs now and in the future. At Connor Insurance, we are here to serve you by protecting what is important to you. Please contact my office at 740-654-2848 for a full list of services and carriers 
or visit my website, connorinsuranceagency.com. Almost everyone needs a car to get from point A to point B, and many families have two or more cars. At Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster, we specialize in hard-to-find used cars. Due to the recent success of the new car market, there is a large inventory of used cars available for resale. We can help you find exactly what you're looking for. With over 15 years at this location and 27 years experience in the business, we are the best place to go to find your next car, truck, van, or SUV. As a member of the Better Business Bureau, we are a Carfax Advantage dealer and offer great financing rates through a local area bank with warranties available on most vehicles. We know your time is valuable, so we take special pride in making sure that you get what you came for at a price that you can afford. Come into the carriage company and check out our sweet deals. Stop by today and let us help you or visit us online at carriagecompany.com. Sweet! The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster or 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. City Council, please join me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day and your many blessings. We thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to go about this work you have called us to do. Father, we pause and remember the lives lost recently uh, in Ohio, across our country. We ask, Lord, that you would be with first responders um, across the country and especially here in Lancaster. We thank you for their dedication and service. We ask that you would also be with our military men and women who are fighting and serving to protect and defend the very freedoms that we enjoy here tonight. We'll continue to give you the praise and glory for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. I hereby call this meeting of Lancaster City Council to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Everyone will make sure your microphones are on. Mrs. Bobbitt? Here. Mrs. Downauer? <laughs> Mr. Groff? Here. Mr. Hall? Here. Mr. McDaniel? Here. Mr. Schoonover? Here. Mr. Stoughton? Here. Mrs. Teener? Here. Mr. Woodyard? Here. Let the record reflect that all nine members of Lancaster City Council are in attendance tonight. Reading and disposing of the journal. I'd like to present the regular meeting minutes dated July 15th, 2019, and the Council of the Whole meeting minutes dated July 29th, 2019. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the journal. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file the journal. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, sweet. All right. <laughs> All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Very good. Reports of city officials. Email dated July 16, 2019 regarding overdose responses submitted by Chief David Ward. Email dated July 17, 2019 regarding Special Finance Committee meeting submitted by Mr. Stoughton. Email dated July 23, 2019 regarding Cancellation of Economic Development Committee meeting submitted by Mr. McDaniel. Email dated August 4, 2019 regarding Code Enforcement meeting agenda submitted by Mrs. Teener. Series of emails dated August 6, 2019 regarding Public Works meeting agenda and venue change submitted by Mr. Schoonover. Email dated August 6, 2019 regarding Planning Commission appointment submitted by Mayor David Smith. 
excuse me, Mayor David Scheffler, <laughs> <laughs> email dated August 8th, 2019, regarding agenda submitted by Deputy Chief Shep, email dated August 8th, 2019, regarding agenda submitted by Service Safety Director Paul Martin, email dated August 12th, 2019, regarding agenda submitted by Chief Adam Pilar, and that is it. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the reports of city officials. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file the reports of city officials. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Are there any communications? There are two. Series of emails dated July 22nd, 2019 regarding special meetings submitted by Diane Wilgen Burnside. And finally, an email dated August 8, 2019 regarding agenda submitted by Julie Coakley. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the communications. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file communications. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We have no special awards or presentations tonight. Are there any petitions or memorials? There are none to be presented. At this time, we set time aside at each of our city council meetings to allow the voters and taxpayers of Lancaster to address city council on any item or issue you would like. If you're interested in addressing city council tonight, we ask that you would come forward to the podium. Sign in with your name and address at the podium and then state the name for, state the same for the record. In accordance with the rules of council, we ask that you would keep your comments to five minutes or less. Please note that while council members may choose to do so at a later time during this meeting, they will not respond to your questions or comments yes. at this time. I see we have one at the podium already, and so, sir, as soon as you sign in, we'll be ready to, uh, to hear what you have to say. Just checking. <laughs> the last meeting I watched on the uh, TV, the Audible, was horrendous. I don't know if you left the mic off or if some of you need booster seats or what. It needs to be fixed. It's bad. It's an injustice to the citizens of Lancaster. We, if we put a man on the moon 50 years ago, we ought to be able to hear a city council meeting in 2019. I did catch uh, from the last meeting terms of belt tightening and showing citizens how you are spending their money for the up and coming up and coming tax levy. The mayor's five member financial committee suggested seven options for city council to go by. One option was a 0.10 percent tax increase, yet some council members made it a 0.45 increase. If you ignore their suggestions, then why have them? Why waste their time? You gave raises last year, knowing the financial state that you was gonna be in today. Did everybody get the raises from the garbage men to the patrol car guy, or just the top officials? As uh, an information for citizens of Lancaster, uh, public uh, retirement, people are based, their retirement's based on the last three years of service. If you gave raises for this year and the next two years, they might have a pay freeze. Well, I'll let the citizens read between the lines there. July 20th, city surplus auction. Over 12 vehicles, mostly pickups and vans, from year 2002, to 2011 and mileage from 44,000 to 82,000. Why were they sold? I work for the county and we have one van used daily with 192,000 miles on it. Tax dollars are wasted right there. I can guarantee the people that the county does not waste money like this. This is crazy. Um, so if you call this belt tightening, I would say your pants are down around your ankles. Only three departments need new vehicles, police, fire, and garbage. Let that pile up. And why was a new vehicle bought last year for a part-time employee when you had these vehicles here they could have used? When Anchor Hawking main office moved to Columbus or wherever up there, 
Did anyone here try to talk to him and say, hey, would you stay in town for half the, half the taxes you're paying? Because it'd been better than what you got now. Nothing. Um, you can't turn, um, every opportunity should be utilized for business wanting to come to town, not turned away because you don't like where they want to locate. There will be more moving. We just lost the longtime uh, hometown restaurant this past weekend. So there's just a, those are just a few belt tightening examples here. Here's a few that I'll give to the city for the goodness of my heart. Uh, you need to close a couple of loopholes you have in a few departments. You'll make a little revenue and might save a life or two. This is this will be a good one. Putting parking meters in all of downtown. Nothing in life is free. You can have free parkings on the weekends. If you're asking or paying for outside advice, use it. They might know a little more than you do. Repeal the raises you gave last year and the commuter tax. I'd like to see that gone. I would like to see the Eagle Gazette too have a weekly spot for the mayor and city council members so they can tell what's going on in the city to the citizens and their wards. Some here chime in on Facebook on a daily basis. You can inform the citizens that don't use it. Sir, you've got about 15 seconds. Please wrap up. And uh, just start living within your means, just like everybody else in Lancaster has to. Thanks. If you could state your name and address. Todd Nolan, 321 East Allen Street. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to address Lancaster City Council? Yes, ma'am. Kim Householder, 1907 Salt Lake Drive. I was here um, a little while back at a meeting um, brought to the attention of a cat issue that I have at my neighbors, and I just wanted to know what the update is for the committee that you had put together to some kind of resolution and see if there's a status on that. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else who would like to address Lancaster City Council this evening? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Could I just update her about the law committee meeting on Wednesday? There is a law committee meeting Wednesday, ma'am, and, and I believe that this issue is on the agenda. Okay. You know what time that is, Mr. Graff? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. in the law uh, director's community room, right? Is that where it is? The Fairfield County Municipal Court, second floor community room. There you yes. Go. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Shirley Carl, and I live at 1907 Salt Lake Drive. And I am Kim's mother. We have a serious problem in the northwest corner of River Valley Highlands, cats. And it's all due to one man, our next door neighbor. You can pass by at any given time during the day in front of his garage, in his yard, out in the street, there's six or seven cats there at all times. In the back, there's four or five. I moved in with Kim in April, April 19th. There have been five litters of kitties born next door. Uh, three of them have just been born within the past five weeks. One of the kitties, one of the mama cats, had her babies under his deck there are six of them. She had them out yesterday. There's six under there. The other two, um, the one is behind us, at somebody's house back there, but she comes several times a day and eats. And the other one is across the street in front of the house, but she comes also and eats. The one that has the babies underneath his deck, um, her last litter is four and a half months old one possibly two of them are already pregnant i mean it's just ridiculous um and i know that the man is not vaccinating and taking care of these cats 
It, there's just no way he could take care of all of them. When we left, there were nine cats in his driveway. I took pictures of them. There was nine cats in his driveway when we left to come to this meeting. There was four on the back porch, the mother cat and the six babies back there. Um, I don't know what can be done about it, but and I don't blame the cats. I blame the man. There's just no way that anybody needs that many cats. And personally, I don't care how many cats he has, but they need to be contained. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for being here. Is there anyone else who would like to address <clears throat> Lancaster City Council this evening? Thank you very much for being here. Reports of standing committees. Finance committee meeting minutes for August 12, 2019 submitted by Mr. Stoughton and the finance committee meeting special meeting minutes from July 22, 2019 submitted by Mr. Stoughton. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the reports of standing committees. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file the reports of standing committees. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Are there reports of special committees? There are none to be presented. There are no public hearings tonight, so we'll move to the reading of resolutions, beginning with the third reading of temporary resolution 82-19. A resolution authorizing the service safety director to advertise for bids for the 5th, 6th Forest Rose sewer separation project, offered by Mr. Woodard, second by Mr. Hall. Mr. Woodard. Uh, Denise, you want to explain this before I make the... All right. Um, the 5th, 6th Forest Rose project is a, a storm sewer project on um, Forest Rose from um, 5th Avenue to 6th Avenue and um, from on 6th Avenue from Forest Rose to High Street and 5th Avenue from Forest Rose to High Street. Uh, this is one of our mandated combined sewer overflow projects in our long-term control plan. Uh, we are applying for a zero interest loan from the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency and part of our schedule with that loan is we have to bid this project um, prior to receiving the loan um, on December 1st so we just need to get this into the process we will have legislation back to you after the bids are received to enter into the contract Thank you. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and interpol in the written record, temporary resolution 8219. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record, temporary resolution 82-19. Discussion, Mr. Woodger. I have no further comments. Other discussion around the table on the motion to pass. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt. Yes. Mrs. Downauer. Yes. Mr. Groff. Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Mr. McDaniel. Yes. Mr. Schoonover. Yes. Mr. Stoughton. Yes. Mrs. Teener. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Temporary resolution 82-19 passes 9 to 0. We now have second reading on temporary resolution 90-19. A resolution authorizing amendment to the Neoride Regional Council of Governments offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Teener. Mr. Schoonover. Second to three readings, please. Second to three readings on temporary resolution 90-19. And I have first reading on a series of resolutions, beginning with temporary resolution 93-19. A resolution to amend the certificate with the county auditor and appropriate from the unencumbered balance in the general fund 101. Offered by Mr. Stoughton, second by Mrs. Downauer. Mr. Stoughton. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to make a motion that council suspend its rules and waive the second and third reading of resolution temporary 93-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution 93-19. Discussion, Mr. Stoughton. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I'm asking for suspension tonight because uh, we are required by law to uh, basically uh, uh, bury indigent folks that happen to die in, in, in the city. Uh, we have spent uh, most of our money uh, to date. Um, and uh, considering we've allocated 7,500, we spent about uh, 6,800 of that. <coughs> so we're uh, appropriating 5,000 tonight. I'm asking for suspension so we can uh, get that money appropriated immediately to the uh, uh, to the uh, auditor and to the general fund. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Stoughton. Further discussion on the motion to suspend. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt. Yes. Mrs. Downauer. Yes. Mr. Groff. Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Mr. McDaniel. Yes. Mr. Schoonover. Yes. Mr. Stoughton. Yes. Mrs. Teener. Yes. Mr. Wichard. Yes. Motion to suspend carries nine to zero. Mr. Stoughton. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record. Resolution temporary 9319. 
Second. We have a motion and second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 93-19. Further discussion, Mr. Stoughton? No, thanks. Other discussion on the motion to pass? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Wichard? Yes. Temporary resolution 93-19 passes 9-0. Temporary resolution 94-19. A resolution to amend the certificate with the county auditor and appropriate from the unencumbered balance in the cemetery fund 270 offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Teener. Mr. Schoonover. Uh, first of three readings, please. First of three readings on temporary resolution 94-19. Temporary resolution 95-19. A resolution authorizing the mayor to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission state capital improvement and or local transportation improvement programs and to execute contracts as required for the ED Road Safety Improvements Project, PID 108470. Offered by Mr. Schooner, second by Mrs. Bobbitt. Mr. Schooner. First of three readings, please. First of three readings on temporary resolution 95-19. Temporary resolution 96-19. A resolution of consent for bridge inspection program services and to authorize the service safety director to enter into a bridge inspection program <coughs> services agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation for PID number 109334. Offered by Mr. Schooner, for second by Mrs. Teener. Mr. Schooner. First of three readings, please. First of three readings on temporary resolution 96-19. Temporary resolution 97-19. A resolution authorizing the mayor to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission State Capital Improvement Program and to execute contracts as required for the C for the SCO 1029 reconstruction project. Offered by Mr. Woodard, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mr. Woodard. First re of three readings, please. First of three readings on temporary resolution 97-19. Temporary resolution 98-19. A resolution to appropriate from the unencumbered balance, amend the certificate with the county auditor in the LDOT Fund 208, LDOT Improvement Fund 314 to increase receipts in the LDOT Improvement uh, 314 and transfer funds to the ED Road Improvement Pro Fund 314 and authorize the issuance of a then and now certificate offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Teener. Mr. Schoonover. Uh, I'm going to have City Engineer Nolan come up, explain this piece. I know we went over it in finance, but just for the Viewing public, uh, just explain this before we move forward. Mr. Nolan. Yes, uh, once again, this is uh, in regards to the Edie Road Safety Improvement Project. Uh, these are some funds that need transferred over so that we can uh, start some uh, uh, funding through ODOT for acquisition phase of that project. So that's, that's what this is for. Thank you, Engineer. Mr. Scooby. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that Council suspend its rules and waive the first and second reading of temporary resolution 9819. Second and third. I, what I say? First and second? Mm -hmm. Sorry, second and third? Very good. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution 98 19. Further discussion, Mr. Schooner? No, sir. Other discussion around the table? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Wichard? Yes. Motion to suspend carries 9 to 0. Mr. Schoonover. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that Council pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 9819. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 98-19. Further discussion, Mr. Schoonover? No, thank you. Other discussion around the table and the motion to pass. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Temporary resolution 98-19 passes 9-0. Temporary resolution 99-19. A resolution to amend the official thoroughfare plan for the City of Lancaster, Ohio, adopted in January 2004. Offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Bobbitt. Mr. Schoonover. Uh, first of three readings, please. First of three readings on temporary resolution 99-19. Temporary resolution 100-19. A resolution to authorize the service safety director to enter into a real estate agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, for the ED Road Safety Improvement Project, PID 108470. Offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Teener. Mr. Schoonover. Uh, once again, I'm going to have Engineer Nolan come up and explain this uh, piece again. I know we went over it in finance. 
Uh, yes, this is, uh, goes in part with temporary resolution uh, 9819, uh, but this will allow the service safety director to enter into an agreement uh, with ODOT for the real estate uh, uh, agreement and to begin acquisition services for the Edie Road project. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that Council suspend its rules and waive the second and third reading of Temporary Resolution 100-19. Second. We have a motion and second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of Temporary Resolution 100-19. Further discussion, Mr. Schoonover? Uh, no, thanks. Other discussion on the motion to suspend? <clears throat> Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Witchard? Yes. Motion to suspend carries 9 to 0. Mr. Schoonover? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that Council pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 100-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 100-19. Uh, just briefly, because I think we all sit around the the room and know, but the ED Road project that so many pieces are coming about is um, the project to widen the short part of ED Road from Memorial Drive to Columbus Street, upgrade that disaster, if you will. I think it's a disaster. So that's what all these ED Road project pieces are um, that are coming through Council. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Further? Discussion on the motion to pass. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Temporary res <coughs> excuse me. Temporary resolution 100 19 carries uh, 9 to 0. Temporary resolution 101 19. A resolution to amend permanent resolution number 48-19 <coughs> authorizing the service safety director to advertise for bids and to enter into a contract for the Mond Hank Drive culvert replacement project offered by Mr. Woodard, second by Mr. Hall. Ms. Woodard. Uh, first of two readings. First of two readings on temporary resolution 101-19. Are there further resolutions to come before City Council this evening? Seeing none, we'll move to the reading of ordinances, beginning with the first reading of Temporary Ordinance 13-19. An ordinance to repeal and replace Lancaster Codified Ordinance Part 9, Streets, Utilities, and Public Services Code, Title I, Streets and Sidewalks, of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Lancaster, and to declare an emergency offered by Mr. Groff, second by Mr. Hall. Mr. Groff. Uh, yes, as stated, this has to do with the right-of-ways. This is uh, a situation that we joined into uh, based on new technology and with a, uh, an outside law firm in conjunction with other cities. Uh, the legislation is new. It will be discussed in the law committee meeting uh, on Wednesday at 9 a.m. Should anyone have any questions, please get them to us before that, or you're welcome to attend that meeting also. Otherwise, uh, any further discussion will be at the next council meeting. And with that, I'll say second reading. First, first reading, I'm sorry. That's all right. First reading on temporary ordinance 13 19. Oh, I know, yeah, but it's first. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, we do have uh, legislation on the table, temporary ordinance 11 19. That remains there uh, until after the uh, voters vote on the income tax levy uh, that will be on the ballot this fall. Are there further ordinances to come before Lancaster City Council? If not, is there any unfinished business this evening? I'd just like to mention, uh, I see that the Parks Department has uh, finally uh, gotten uh, the basis up for some swings at uh, uh, Lane Rico Park and also uh, one basket up. They can't play full court yet, but one basket's up there. And since we were told that was available back in May, I'm glad two-thirds of the way through summer we've got at least one basket up. Hopefully we get the other up soon. Very good. Once they get it up, you and I go and do a little one-on-one, -on -one, even if it's in the I, snow. I can handle that. All right. <laughs> Further unfinished. We'll have the squad like waiting out there. Yeah. yeah that's great. <laughs> have them on notice. Any other unfinished business this evening? <coughs> Mr. I have a question for for the law director acting. Um, I saw the Supreme Court is picking up the uh, case about local income tax. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. No, but centralized collection. Centralized collection of in income tax. Okay. So they picked up the part, I think, specific to home rule. So uh, yes. I believe that. Uh, you know, 
all municipalities are supposed to gang up and send uh, all sorts of amicus briefs in specific to uh, our position. So yeah, we'll absolutely look at getting on that. Thank okay, you. Cool. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Stoke. Thank you, Assistant Law Director. Further unfinished business. Is there any new business this evening? Yes, Ms. Dean. Yes, um, I do believe Mr. Nolan, who uh, spoke uh, during taxpayers' time, um, left I what is uh, with the interface I, I have had a lot of complaints that they can't hear it uh, they can't hardly hear it they can listen but they it's black screen um, I always watch the YouTube later just to pick up something maybe that I didn't or maybe to hear your voice again or something yeah so but you know what is the is there is this going to be well, I will address that. First of all, the uh, audio portion is speaking up close to the microphone and talking into it instead of leaning back and having it three or four feet from your face. That would help a lot. Uh, the picture issues hopefully are resolved after 10 months. Um, we have finally gotten the technology uh, complete that uh, interface video now has the capability of using the spectrum um, system, I guess, that's installed upstairs. Uh, it's been, yeah, I've, I don't really want to describe the issues we've had with spectrum, but they've been significant. And uh, as of about a week and a half ago, um, they've been resolved. And uh, so they, the viewer should be able to see on channel 1021 uh, in much greater detail, but I would encourage everybody to speak up close to the microphone instead of leaning back. So just to clarify, the issues with it being off of the air for a period of time and there being a black screen was not interface video. No, that was a was spectrum issue. Connection with spectrum. That's, spectrum that's correct. Okay. They, they okay. had some malfunction of equipment, I understand, uh, and it took them quite some time to find a replacement. And then we can we can speak with interface and see if there's something we can do with this audio. I think it's particularly during the live broadcast when you go back and watch it afterward. Right. It's not it's because not you can much. Google the YouTube and right. then put the Lancaster, but make sure you put Ohio because if not, I think every state has a Lancaster, and Quite you'll have long. a lot of Lancasters popping up that aren't well, they're obviously Some of them not. Have a Lancaster. Or Lancaster. Mm. Yeah, that's right. You got it right, sister. All right. Further new business tonight. David. Yes, but I just wanted to make certain that the that the public knows that um, you know interface came to our rescue. They they in, inherited what what we had. So we've mentioned their name a couple times. So we we also want to thank them too. Thank you very much. I agree. Just, just one quick point: Is there any way that we can check levels on uh, microphones to make sure that they're all providing the same level of output? I see that there is um, what looks to be like a level control at the bottom of, um, of some of these mics. Is that a, do we, do we use that to control um, the volume on each of the mics or is that controlled by uh, the uh, video team? I think the video team is going to control. Yeah, I'm getting the do not touch the mic sign. Oh, okay, the all right. Of, of the, video the mics are fine. Yeah, and, and uh, it's us. So, well, I think partly us and yeah, and, and uh, so anything we can do to lean in and, and really speak loudly into those microphones, I think it's going to help people here as well as the viewing public as we go forward. But all you should have to do is make sure it's on. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Further new business this evening. All right, very good. We will then ask the clerk to read the scheduled meetings. Next regular sessions of council, August 26, 6.30 p.m. here in council chambers. The following meeting, September 9th at 6.30 p.m. Um, there are no upcoming special meetings, upcoming committee meetings for the next 30 days. Safety, August 14th at 7.30 a.m. at the City Hall Conference Room on the second floor. Law Committee, August 14th at 9 a.m. at the Fairfield County Municipal Court Community Room on the second floor. <coughs> water, Water Pollution Control, August 21st at 7 a.m. at the Water, Water Pollution Control Conference Room. <coughs> Excuse me. Finance, August 26th at 6 p.m. here in Council Chambers. And finally, finance here September 9th at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers. And again, all of these dates are listed on the city webpage calendar. Thank you, Clerk. 
clerk say any? Are there any bills this evening? There is one PNC for MNCO publication of legislation in the amount of three hundred twenty dollars and ninety cents. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to pay the bills. Second. We have a motion and a second to pay the bills. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Is there a need for an executive session this evening? There is, Mr. President. Mr. Stone. Mr. President, I would like to make a motion to uh, convene into executive session to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or an official pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code, Section 121.22G1. The executive session should include the following individuals, council president, council members, assistant law director, mayor, auditor, safety, service safety director, treasurer, and fire chief ward. Second. We have a motion and a second to go into executive session. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Skinover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. We are now in executive session. I will note that there is no action expected at the end of this executive session. You're more than welcome to hang out if you like. When we come back, all we will be doing is adjourning. We are now in executive session. Mr. President. Mr. Stoughton. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that council return to its regular order of business. Second. We have a motion and a second to return to the regular order of business. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Motion to return to the regular order of business passes 9-0. to zero. Is there any further business to come before Lancaster City Council this evening? Hearing none, the motion to adjourn is in order. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Anyone can say. There we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, All those in favor, say up by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Make sure you sign your legislation. Thank you all very much. Oh, yeah.